Good morning, everyone. I'm Uncle Dan, and for our third devotion on Cain and Abel, we're going to be thinking this morning about the lesson of looking out for others. Before we begin, we'll bow our heads and we'll offer a prayer. Almighty God in heaven, our loving Father, we offer our praise and our thanks to thee for the blessings of this new day, the life that you have given us, our health and our strength and our safety for our family and our, for our friends. We thank you for our teachers. And we thank you especially for your word that teaches us, that guides us, and that gives us hope. Help us, Father, to pay attention this day. Help us to learn lessons that we can take from your word and use each and every day so that we might be pleasing children in thy sight, awaiting the return of our Lord and Master. And it's in his name that we offer this prayer, even Jesus Christ, our coming King. Amen. So what we saw yesterday in the story of Cain and Abel, we saw that Cain, after his offering had been rejected, that his anger arose, his anger burned hot, his countenance fell. And we, we saw that God spoke to Cain in a, a patient and a loving way to try and persuade him to turn back and to do what was right. Well, instead of taking that opportunity for a second chance, Cain let his anger and his jealousy burn within him and get the better of him. And Cain murdered his brother Abel in the field. We see that after Cain had killed his brother, that God again spoke to him and was still merciful and patient with him. God asked him questions. God tried to persuade him to uh, again confess, but Cain tried to hide his sins and pretend like nothing had happened. But we know God sees and knows everything. Cain was still not sorry or repentant, and so God pronounced judgment upon him. God said that Cain would be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth or a wanderer, and the earth would no longer yield its strength. We just want to go back and we want to look at a few details um, from a few verses that we've already looked at. The first verse is verse 9 of Genesis chapter 4. After Cain had murdered his brother, um, God spoke to him, and God said, Where is Abel, thy brother? Cain lies to God, and he says, I know not. And then he smartly, he, he replies to God, Am I my brother's keeper? Well, the answer to this question is, yes, of course. Cain is his brother's keeper. And that's, that's where I, our idea will come from this morning about looking out for others. The scriptures are full of verses that talk about looking after our brother, looking out for others. And Cain, especially being the elder brother, should have been one who did look out for his brother. Well, of course, the lesson of looking out for our brothers can be applied on a very natural level, a literal level, but we, uh, we will take it on a spiritual level, of course. And uh, that, <clears throat> that is the way that we'll look at, at it this morning. And remember, in our first devotion, I had a little challenge for the uh, the older ones to look up um, or, or to count in Genesis chapter 4, in the first 18 verses, the number of times that Cain, Abel, and brother, those three words, the number of times that those three words come up. Well, if you did some homework, um, you'll find that the word Cain comes up 14 times in those first 18 verses. Abel comes up seven times, and brother comes up seven times. We're not going to dwell on the significance of the numbers, uh, except to say that there is a great emphasis. Obviously, we would expect Cain and Abel to come up lots, but the word brother comes up seven times. It's in verse 2, it's in verse 8 twice, verse 9 twice, verse 10, and verse 11. And so there's a great emphasis on brother an emphasis that's pointing out to us that, yes, Cain should have been 
his brother's keeper. So from the narrative in Genesis chapter 4, and when we also look to the New Testament, we, we can clearly see that Cain is not one who looked out for his brother. Look at him there. He's actually, <laughs> he's not looking out for his brother. Quite the opposite, in fact. He, Cain thinks about himself. He thinks about the things he wants. He doesn't listen to his brother's encouragement to do what's right. He doesn't listen to God's encouragement to do what's right. Cain plots to kill his brother. He thinks about it. And then he carries out that terrible plan in the field. No, definitely not. Cain is not one who looks out for his brother. But then on the flip side, we look at Abel. And we piece the clues together. We see that Abel was one who tried to look out for his brother. We just mentioned the fact, the, the emphasis of the word brother in Genesis chapter 4 points us in this direction. We see that possibly, and I say possibly, the offerings, plural, that Abel brought. It's just a, 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 a possible um, idea that also points us in that direction. The occupation that Cain, cho oh, sorry, that Abel chose of being a shepherd as he learned to shepherd and to care for the sheep. So he took those ideas and, and those principles and he, he tried to use them in order to shepherd and to look out for others, um, being, of course, his brother Cain, one that he, he tried to look out for. The dialogue between Jesus in the New Testament, between Jesus and the Jews, is very characteristic many people feel about the dialogue or the attitude between Cain and Abel. And of course, we see Jesus looking out for his brothers, the Jews, looking out for them and trying to persuade them to do what's right and to bring them around to a spiritual understanding. And then uh, a key verse on this topic, 1 John chapter 3, verses 11 to 16. And I'll just pause, or if you could just Pause the video, please, for a second. And if somebody could read that verse, first, uh, that set of verses, 1 John 3, verses 11 to 16. Thanks for the reading. And uh, yes, so the Apostle John in this passage, of course, encourages us to love one another, to love our brethren, to look out for our brothers and sisters, to look out for our friends. And when we look to the teaching and the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, it takes it even, even a step further, of course. We look out for those that we don't even really get a, maybe get along with all that well. We look out for them. Christ told us, of course, to even love our enemies and to pray for them. And so Christ, of course, shows us the ultimate example of loving and giving himself when he laid down his life for us. That was the ultimate display of true, godly, brotherly love, as verse 16 um, of 1 John 3 tells us. And as a side note, of course, we, we don't think that we would ever be as bad as Cain, who's mentioned in verse 12, and, and kill someone. But it says that if we hate our brother in our heart, we hate our friend in our heart. It's as as bad as killing them it's it tells us in this passage that's very strong language so we have to remember that god sees and knows exactly what's going on in our heart but getting back to our main idea yes of course we have to be our brother's keeper look out for our brother look out for our friends care for them abel was one who understood this and tried to to practice this in his life Cain, however did not want to be his brother's keeper. So what exactly does it mean to be our brother's keeper? The word for keeper, interestingly, is the, is the word in Hebrew, shamar. And when you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, it means to guard or to attend, to look after, or to protect. It's the Hebrew word that's also um, the same word used in Genesis 2 verse 15. Where Adam, where yeah, Adam is placed in the garden by God to dress and to keep the garden, to look after the garden, to attend to it. And that word is is translated sometimes to keep, to observe, to to attend to, uh, to preserve, um, or to to watch after, uh, to look look after. And so Adam was 
was to look after the garden in the same way that Abel and Cain are supposed to look after each other and the same way that we're supposed to look after our brothers and sisters and our, our friends. And so we have a responsibility to each other to look out for each other physically, spiritually, to protect those, we might say, who are weak or vulnerable, to guard those who are maybe too close to the edge, and to attend to those who are sick. So practically speaking, though, what does that mean? Well, a, a few examples of what it may, uh, of how being our brother's keeper or looking out for others may uh, may take shape in our lives. We can keep a lookout for those who aren't included when we're at school or at CYC. Invite them to join us and to play with us or to uh, to be involved in whatever activity we're doing. We can help out with jobs at school or at home or at CYC or in the Ecclesia, wherever um, help is needed. We can warn our friends if we think they're they're walking away from God and encourage them in the right direction. We can visit the older members and the sick in the Ecclesia. We can send a card to someone who's sick or somebody who's going through a, a trial or a difficult time. We can take a meal. Maybe we can help mom, mom or dad make a meal and take it to a family who needs it or uh, to, uh, to some in the Ecclesia who, who are just needing some help and some support and some encouragement. And of course, last but certainly not least, we can pray for others, which is so important. And so a couple Bible examples that we can uh, think of. Perhaps you could um, come up with a few other ones, but the, uh, the ones that I've thought of, and, and there are many uh, examples from the scriptures of those who looked out for others, we could think of Noah. We might not think of him at first, but he was a preacher of righteousness. And he looked out for others by just inviting them into the ark and uh, want, inviting them to share in coming into the ark. That was looking out for others, wasn't it? Joseph, we know, undoubtedly was a seeker of his brother in all his life. Moses looked for the good of his brothers and for the whole congregation. Paul, of course, we know, the apostle, looked out for his brothers and sisters and on every occasion. He prayed for them. He visited them. He, he did uh, his best to provide physically for them where he could um, and in so many ways. Or we might think of Dorcas, a, a very quiet and faithful example who looked to the needs of others and, and was full of good works and alms deeds, it says. Or also the example of Lydia, who did much good to Paul and his companions, and indeed to her whole ecclesia. So, children, young people, let us remember the lesson of looking out for others, of being our brother's keeper. It's a very important thing to do, and the Lord Jesus Christ himself, of course, instructed us to look out for others and to show great concern and care for them. He said to his disciples in John 13, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if ye have love one for another. And so Jesus wants us to love one another in the same way that he showed love and care for us. And he also told us in Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And so when we look out for the needs of others, it's as if we're, we're doing it for Jesus himself. What a great encouragement it is and motivation to look out for others and, and for their needs. And so let's do our best at, at that today and uh, and indeed every day as we await our Lord's return.